Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name is Bobby Waldron, and in this video, we're going to be having a nice look at Wingnut Wings Bristol F2B Fighter 130 second scale. This is the first time I've um, had a look at a Wingnut Wings kit. As you can see, artwork actually looks rather fantastic it does seem to have that old kind of world war one sort of feel we've got markings on the side to show you on the box art uh, moving around and then underneath nothing so let's have a quick look and see what we get in the kit before i sort of un bag all this and um, you know properly have a good look at it. Instructions, first look at instructions as you can see quite a big instruction sheet nicely in colour um, you know and looking rather good it's going to be good to have a real good look at that and that was um, also separately bagged. We have to start off with we have a bunch of um, you know we got uh, separately bagged one sprue per bag nice um, looking plastic here we got a few bombs and everything on there and and all little bits and bobs a bit of engine detail um, clear parts not much to speak of um, you know we don't really have canopies in World War one um, we have a again separately bagged nice quality bag in here this is like the fuselage section looking rather good there as well and just kind of quickly move through this part um, again, absolutely everything is nicely one sprue, one bag, which is what you want to see because it prevents all the scratching of the plastic. Um, so they're looking nicely bagged, nice wing section here as well. Uh, and just loads of bits and bobs, cockpit detail, uh, uh, detail and everything in there. You do then get, um, again, separately bagged, we have this massive, massive uh, decal sheet here. And a bit of photo, which which is um, you know wing, wings um, homemade um, photo etch there. So let's get this all sorted, and we'll uh, have a real proper look at this now. Starting off with the instructions. Hopefully, as you can see, nice kind of description about the aircraft. Nice satin, quite thick, um, nicely colourful paper. Um, and hopefully what you'll see is we've got nice call outs for Humbrol and Tamiya um, for all the different colours, again lovely nice paper and the first thing you'll notice um, in step one is you know we've got all this nice different colour going on, it explains it nicely, tells you where to um, paint what colour, what colour and then you've also got all this lovely actual um, reference photos actually going on here for the cockpit to get it you know just right it saves you doing all that research you know I think it's absolutely fantastic how they do that and this cockpit really does look like it's going to build up really really nice um, into an actual you know nice good looking cockpit um, you do not get the the actual um, the rigging with this. Um, I do recommend um, it's like a nice sort of um, an elastic sort of rigging you can get for it, um, rather cheaply as well. There is a bit of photo etch that goes in here as well, which is rather nice, um, you know. But it really does look like it's um, you know these instructions are really going to get you there really really nicely. Um, and then just moving through, hopefully as you can see, it really explains it the reference photos really kind of make these instructions for you um, and then you know then you've got some old-fashioned photos where uh, you know you can really sort of you know see you know what it was like a bit of weathering and all that kind of stuff the engine really gets explained nicely again loads of nice reference photos which is just um, smashing for this kit as well um, then we have you know our uh, uh, mg at the back as well very nice nice bit of photo etch going on in there the options of having the engine cowl on and off uh, uh, two two propellers or four propellers um, and moving along we then have like the whole dreaded rigging business going on there you either love it or you hate it um, you know again nice big reference photo there um, it's probably the one that I've used um, for making this kit as well, that actual aircraft. And then we've got these loads of nice markings, about five markings going on here. Um, seems to explain it quite nicely, the colours, um, where the decals go as well. Um, you know, again, you know, nice reference photos, probably of the actual aircrafts that these decals um, go to. 
So there you go. I mean, to be totally honest, I think this is probably one of the best instructions I have seen to date. I know Eddard do some top-notch instructions, but these wing not wing ones are really nice because they add those nice reference photos in there. So um, really good there. Um, we then have our decals, and again, you know, the decals. I mean. Before we even sort of look at them, I mean, they say printed by cartographer, which, you know, we just know they're going to be the best in the world, so we haven't got to worry about them. They're nicely in registry, nicely sat in. Um, a lot of nice decals here. You can read the small print, absolutely fantastic. Um, another set of little decals here as well, also, you know, printed by cartographer, made in Italy. Then we have a nice bit of photo etch here that comes with it. Now, these you know aren't Eddard photo etch you know it is wing nut wings photo etch they do feel maybe a little bit sort of on the thick side um, but you know I, I trust me I've, I've done some really thick ones they don't feel that bad um, they just they don't feel like um, Eddard basically so I mean you know it might not be as easy as using Eddard photo etch but I don't think they're going to be that bad so it's nice to have that in there which we've got some nice seat belts and, and that going on there which is um, rather nice. Move along with our first few bits we've got um, a duplicate um, sprue here which we have to show you we've got our nice wheels going on there um, our MG there looks rather nicely detailed um, these have got to be like a nice wood grain finish as well which um, holds the two um, Two wings together we've got some nice bombs here as well so we can um, beef it up a bit and as I say there's two of them then we have um, our engine um, kind of sprue going on here which does look rather nicely detailed lots of little pieces coming together no flash really going on with this kit either which is rather good um, and so far on this PC I mean that the, the we do have some ejector pin marks I mean we've got bringing it a little bit more closer we've got some little ejector pin marks just here and um, we're probably not going to see that there um, but looking through not looking too bad then we've got our main piece our fuselage section which we have this nice big uh, propeller here a two blade or a or a four blade going on we have um, probably our engine cowl bits going on here as well which if we bring you in you can have a look at the detail that's going on here um, hopefully as you can see we do have recessed panel lines um, and bring you to the fuselage section you know recessed panel lines but we do have this sort of raised detail here um, going on which is rather nice it does feel um, quite smooth actually so it's you know should be good for spraying but as you can see nice detail going on both recessed rivets recessed um, panel lines raised bits going on here as well which is rather nice we turn it over yes we do have uh, one or two ejector pin marks just in here and I do believe you're gonna want to take care of them but um, they're not that bad actually they should be quite easy to take care of rather quickly rather easily um, we do have the floor of our cockpit just here as well which you know again I mean you've got what seven um, ejector pin marks there you probably want to take care of them as well because I think that's going to be on show and that needs to be a nice wood effect there so that's a little bit of a shame there but then we do have on the underside the underside detail going on there as well as you can see you know nice detail absolutely lovely um, warp marks I've not really seen any warp marks with this kit at all so you know nicely above average there um, but we're just looking at some more kind of flaps and stable horizontal and vertical stabilizers just going on here as well again as you can see the lovely um, sort of raised rivets going on here um, we have a cockpit detail here both um, left and right as you can see it's looking rather nice hopefully as you can see um, we do have a lot of ejector pin marks this side but that's going to be up against the um, the actual inside the uh, the fuselage section so it's going to cover up what ejector pin marks that we have going on there but that looks rather nice then we have our um, wings going on here um, I'll just bring you out for this because hopefully as you can see we have this nice 
kind of ripply effect going on which is um, supposed to be rather accurate for this aircraft and the nice kind of raised rivets that we've got going on as well um, you know very very nice not seeing any warping going on with it either it does all um, look rather nice turning it over you know uh, for a big piece like this we've got no ejector pin marks going on on the underside so we haven't got to take care of any of that and you, you know and it's just really looking nicely detailed and I've just not seen any flash at all going on with this then we have a load of different bits of cockpit detail and um, instrument display panels and as you can see we've got our straw seat here as well looking rather nicely detailed there as well um, moving along we've got sort of like um, um, back um, cockpit panel bits here or is it the front of the or is it the, the engine panel just here as well nicely detailed there we've got some nice detail going in there as well which is rather nice um, moving along you know we do have a nice bit of leather detail going on there which should be rather nice if you paint it up nice the instrument display panel looking a little bit plain but I mean we do have decals to put in there for all the in instrument de uh, instruments um, going on there and then it's just lots of little pieces that go here there and everywhere um, again you know you know no issue with flash uh, but in one or two places, I mean again, you know back here on our um, seat we do have an ejector pin mark just there which we're going to want to take care of and I think that just in one or two other places as well that we might see an ejector pin mark but um, I must say actually it's not that bad because really any of the, the real main problem really with this kit is, is is the ejector pin marks but they're not that bad I mean they're in places where you can get to easy enough to sand out or fill in and sort out they haven't put the ejector pin marks in really nasty places that you just find it really really hard to sort out so actually not bad with the ejector pin marks so the final score for this kit I gave it a final score of 8.7 which gives it a nice above average kit almost going into the excellence almost hitting that nine mark to get into the excellence um, I scored it really highly on instructions I scored it highly on deck uh, the decals because they're cartographer scored it highly on packaging because I mean every single sprue here had its own separate bag um, where it kind of scored poorly well I wouldn't say poorly but the worst it scored was in the ejector pin marks but even those were almost hitting above average because I mean as I say you know they're not in um, you know nasty places where you can't deal with them they are there but you can deal with them quite quite nicely so yeah I mean I think this is a fantastic kit I've been wanting to take a look at one and build one for a while and I am quite impressed actually with it and I definitely recommend um, anyone to get one um, the only um, real issue really is the price now I, I didn't score the price into this score because there are two prices going on here we have over in the US it's $99 which works out at about £60 ish here in the UK which is a nice price I think for this kit is a nice nice price however it doesn't work that way here in the UK whatever kind of um, distribution charges or um, taxes or whatever's been going on from getting this kit from the US to the UK potentially Europe as well um, puts this kit at £100 here in the UK which I just think is just overpriced for this kit you know it's a nice kit but £100 is, is just too much I mean it's £40 ish more than what it is over in the US which um, yeah as I say here in the UK it's not a good price but in the in the US you know it's a good price that's why I've not kind of scored it it's an 8.7 with a note on price depending where you are in the world um, depends whether you you know you've got a good price or you've got a bad price um, in, in my opinion hundred pounds just too much I did manage to get this off eBay for about 65 pounds so um, you know I got a good price on this one so hopefully you've enjoyed this inbox review um, you know and if you really really like it I, you know, I do recommend you go out and buy it um, the last thing as well just to say is from what I've read this thing goes together really really nicely you know you shouldn't have any problems with fit issues with this kit 
at all and and for the rigging i would recommend you know you go off and get those um easy lines from models i go or something like that so um hopefully you've enjoyed this inbox review until next time my name is bob waldron and this is genesis models Thank <laughs> you.